Wellspring Ministries presents Streams in the Desert, hosted by Pastors George and Sharon Stover. This dynamic Las Vegas couple bring the life-changing Word of God alive through the anointed prophetic ministry. Their teaching causes mountain-moving faith to bring the victory of God's love to bear on the everyday issues of life. Join George and Sherwin now as they share with you the secrets and the joys of a fulfilling and abundant Spirit-filled and Spirit-led life. Well, let me be the first to, to say to you, uh, Happy New Year. Yeah, it may not be yours, but it's mine. <laughs> On uh, the 15th of July in 1973, I was born again. Hallelujah. You know, that's, that's pretty exciting, at least for me. And uh, for those that were my enemies, it was a good thing. And so... <laughs> and uh, the, so it, it, it's also... Uh, the the 18th of July is the anniversary of this church. And uh, I thought I'd talk a little bit about that maybe today and just f so you might, uh, you know, wonder where we came from, where we're going. And uh, I thank God for, for people that have been so faithful over the years uh, with us. And uh, without them, we just wouldn't make it. I mean, Pastor Lou was in the organizing, the original organization meeting that was in our living room uh, years and years ago in uh, 19, actually 1984. And uh, we've, been, we've been all over the world ever since. Praise the Lord. But that, the wonderful thing is that God has said in his word and also spoken, you know, he'll speak to you. And he'll take out of his word and he'll speak to you specifically about where you are and what you're doing, that kind of a thing. And he said, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. Hallelujah. And I like that. Uh, I really do. And he, 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 and he said, what you've experienced and seen so far is just the first fruits of what lies ahead. See, th this is, uh, it, it's just a new year. It, it's a new season. There's a song, it goes, it's a new season, it's a new day, there's a fresh anointing coming your way, a season of power and prosperity, it's a new season, it's a new day. And, and that is just, you know, I go around humming it because it's, uh, that's where we're at right now. It's my personal new year, you know. And I don't make resolutions. I just, it's just a time when God has chosen to adjust uh, our ministry, our direction, uh, whatever, whatever it is to talk to us in fresh new ways. And of course, he has been. Where is the enthusiastic, overwhelming excitement about that? I mean, yeah, really, it's easy. All you have to do is just say, just, just get, get, excited about your church and invite people. 78% of the people that go to church go to church because their friends invited them. You know, the rest of it is all kind of, you know, at one time I heard, well, 10% is the pastor. If people hear him and like him, they'll come. But they really don't care. See, I, I, I know whether you care or don't care, I, it's not about me anyway. So that's okay. 78%, though, is friendship fellowship. What do your friends say? And uh, if, if, you, if you invite your friends, and, and sometimes the trick is out inviting them, because they'll be inviting you to go where they go. Now, I'm not trying to build a church off of other churches, you understand, but I'm, I'm very zealous about the things of God, and I know people are in a lot of places they shouldn't be. Uh, we've talked to too many church-going, regular church-going tithing members of congregations that aren't, they're not even born again. 
they're, they're evidently their church didn't deem it really important what happens to their eternity, eternal uh, destiny as long as they go to church and pay their tithes. Well, you know, that's upside down. There's something wrong with that. Our first priority should be that people are born again. Your church doesn't save you. I don't care what the Pope said. <laughs> <laughs> and he did say that just recently. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. He said, he, he, after he met with Ken Copeland and, and uh, uh, John Arnott and his, his and, and who else was it? It was uh, Dave Robert, Robertson. Um, they had quite a time together. It was wonderful. And of course, it, was, it gave everybody a lot of hope that the church was, the Holy Spirit was bringing the church together, which the Holy Spirit does. But the Pope had a little different understanding of what was going on because right after a week, not even a week afterwards, he made several speeches, and in each of them, he said, it is dangerous to, have a, to think that a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is, is good for you. It, it, it won't, yeah. And, and that it, it's dangerous. He said, it's dangerous, and you need to belong to the church. Now, he didn't say the Roman Catholic Church, but that was implied. I mean, come on, he's the Pope. And, and so, really, you, Rome has not changed, see? And, and so that, that is, that's his understanding there's where he's at. Now, I have, I have a great regard for the church. I wouldn't be a pastor if I didn't. And uh, I believe the local church is an important, integral part of the faith walk, but you don't get saved by belonging to a particular church. You know, coming to church here won't save you. I'm sorry, it won't. It's only your personal relationship with Jesus Christ that will do that. And then, then it really doesn't matter what kind of a tag you want to hang on yourself. I don't care what you call yourself, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, you know, Pentecostal, even Roman Catholic, uh, I don't care. As long as you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you're in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, it, it's kind of like, let's, let's stick to the basics, stick to the truth, and... Uh, 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 just get people saved, and the rest will take care of itself. Because once you're really born again, you just can't get enough of Jesus. If you're really saved, you just cannot get enough of Jesus. You can't get enough of the Word of God. You can't get enough of church. It's just like, boy, I caught something. <laughs> and it's a good something. Amen? Yeah, and, and I understand there's struggles and there's different things, but that's still, there's something in you. It just keeps drawing you, drawing you. And that's the Holy Spirit. He's saying, come, draw closer. I, want, I, want to, I want, really want to get intimate with you. And that's, that's a great thing. And uh, th this, is, this is a season when you and I are going to see a tremendous ingathering into the church. Uh, the Lord promised, and I've said this before, that when... Uh, it, through several prophets. Number one, the Azusa Street uh, pastor, uh, William Seymour, and is, you have to study about Azusa Street, a phenomenal uh, event that took place from 1906 to 1915, somewhere in there. And uh, William Seymour uh, pastored there at, 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 on Bonnie Bray Street and, and Azusa, at the Azusa Barn. And uh, Pentecostalism spread all over the world. I mean, every Pentecostal group that there is can trace their roots back to there. That's how powerful that was. And there wasn't, there wasn't advertising, there wasn't Twitter, there wasn't Facebook, there wasn't, it was just God doing it and people word of mouth and people were hungry and they came there and they, they caught the fire of Pentecost and the Holy Ghost and they got saved and baptized with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, they went all over the world. And so right now, Pentecostalism is all over the world, and, and actually uh, the fastest growing group of people in the world, faster than Islam, faster than anything. And it, it, we're the people that are getting the world saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. Then, then uh, he, he prophesied that in 100 years, and, and that was around 1940. In 100 years, there'd be a greater outpouring than Azusa. Do the math. 100 years. Yeah, 1940. In 1906, 1915, it was 1914. Yeah, 
100 years. And here we are. See, you're, you're, it's a divine destiny. God's going to do something with or without us, and we might as well be involved. Right. Amen? Then, then uh, uh, Janie Wilkerson, I believe it was Janie Wilkerson, uh, was a prophetess uh, in the Rima camp, the Word of Faith camp, and she has since passed away. She prophesied that when the last of three great men went home to glory, that the, the greatest outpouring the world has ever seen would take place. See, well... She named them. Interesting, huh? She named them. And she said, hello, welcome. She said that uh, uh, she named uh, Oral Roberts, who has passed away. Kenneth E. Hagan, who has passed away. And Dr. Billy Graham. 96 years old, still speaking to America. Uh, I don't want him to die, but I do understand that he is a sign and a wonder in this, in this day. And when he passes away, when he goes home to glory, God is going to pour out his spirit and fulfill those prophecies. Now, in the, in the, uh, in the late 70s, the Lord spoke to me and told me, that he was going to revisit. Now, understand, I, I was born again in 1973, born again in the last part of the charismatic renewal. And the, the charismatic renewal was just waning. Thousands of people from all denominations had been born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, powerful move of God. I mean, it went through the Roman Catholic Church. The nuns, priests were getting saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost, Lutherans. I mean, everybody. It was just, wow. And Dino Shikari, and of course, started the Full Gospel Businessmen, and there were, there were men getting together at meetings almost every day, and they were getting saved and getting, it was just fabulous. And so that was waning, and the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to revisit Las Vegas with a greater uh, visitation and outpouring than the charismatic. That's what he said to me. So here I am, and I'm saying, hmm, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, and I even get to be one of them, praise the Lord, that God is about to do something that is just going to absolutely stagger the world. A sovereign outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's not, it doesn't, when this happens, it doesn't just sweep through the church world. It does. But it absolutely reaps a harvest all over the world. And, and from what everybody at the, the praise has been saying is it's going to be a decade of harvest. In other words, 10 years of gathering in precious souls to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's, that's the day you're living in. I want you to understand that. I've seen things you may not have seen yet, but you will, and almost on a daily or at least a weekly basis, if you, you get in. If you just jump in with both feet say, I am a Christian, I don't care what the world is doing, I'm going to be a testimony, and I'm going to do what the Bible tells me to do, you will raise the dead. I have. Not, not, that's nothing on me. That's God. The God that I serve is still a raiser of the dead. He, he can still do that, and he will through anybody that's willing to give it a try. Now, granted, the first person I prayed for, she stayed dead. <laughs> So you can't, you, can't, you can't go by your experience. You need to say, what does the Word say? And then I'm, I'm going to stay with the Word until I see it in my life. I mean, if, it's, if, if it happened once for somebody, it's going to happen for somebody else. Might as well be me. Come on. I don't like watching football. I want to play football. Right? I love, I love soccer, but I'm just too old to go get involved or I would. Right? It's a great, it, all of that stuff is wonderful. I, and going to church is great too. But what happens is we need to be able to get up out of the pews, go out, and begin to just do what Jesus did. Well, get in the game. Yeah, just get in the game. Get by the shirt. Wear it. I mean, just, you know, whatever the colors are, Obama fans or whatever, you can, ha you can have a Jesus. You know, right, it's the same thing. Okay. See? So, so. I, I'm just, here I am again at another year has gone by and uh, born again Sunday the 15th, 1973. And uh, in, in, it was interesting, there was actually a church in our den and that's, that's where it all happened. And I got saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost, just boom, boom, just like that. I didn't have time to think about it. I didn't have to question it. 
I didn't have to wonder if it was for today. In fact, I didn't know anything about it. It just happened. And I, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Right? This is awesome. Okay. And, of course, I thought that everybody would have the same experience. Well, not so, but that's all right. Uh, it, 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 it all works out. Praise the Lord. Wellspring Ministries, Churches, and Missions started in, in July 18, 1984. That was just a, a ministry I started. I started writing, doing teaching materials, sending tapes to the nations, that kind of thing. Then the church then was, was uh, started, Wellspring Church and Christian Center, started July 18, 1987, in the living room of our home. And from there, we uh, moved to the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Oakey and Jones in September of 1987. And that was nice. We were in their youth chapel. Of course, they meet, you know, they Seventh-day Adventists, they meet on Saturday. So they weren't using their facility. They could rent it on Sunday to us heathen. Praise the Lord. And so, <laughs> you know, this worked out really well for them, worked out good for us. So we filled their, their youth chapel, which seated about 100 people. And we were up to 120. We moved into their main chapel. Uh, their church, and just, woo, we had some meetings, didn't we? And then uh, we decided that we, we needed more space, and on Easter Sunday, April 1st, 1990, on folding chairs, the congregation rejoiced in the presence of the Lord as the first service was held at Decatur Shopping Center, 1401 North Decatur in Suite 13. Hallelujah. We, we grew from, from the 120 to... Uh, about 300, 350 as we took more and more space, opened the thrift store, food bank, all that stuff. And I know you're wondering where did all that go? Uh, but it, it was an exciting time, but it was only a first fruit. What we've, what we've experienced, we're going to experience greater. See? And uh, it, it was a wonderful thing. But then 13 years ago in April, we moved to where we are. Everybody was in one accord. We, pray, we had prayed for a year and a half, looked at different facilities, came out here, bought this property. And uh, little did we know what we were going to face when we got out here. Because once we got out, and I love this church. It's a diverse church. You know, we're black and white and yellow and red and all everything in between, young and old. And I mean, that's wonderful. That's the way it should be. That's who we are. And uh, we moved out here, and all the rednecks and the Mormons out here decided that we should not be here because they don't, didn't want our kind of church here, whatever that meant. I kind of knew what that meant. But anyway, they lawyered up, and they, the community out here fought us for a year and a half. And by the time that year and a half was over, we were down to 25 people. People went to other churches, got discouraged. You know, when things don't happen overnight, we're so microwave-oriented, we just say, well, if it doesn't happen overnight, it must not be God. We've got to move on. Well, you know, China never would have got saved if that had been the case, never been evangelized. Uh, Africa never would have been evangelized if people had that mentality that if it doesn't work in a year, I'm out of here. See, it, it takes going in, digging your trenches, and standing. So having done all, we stood. And we were attacked. I was accused of being a, a, it was amazing. We had one man across the street that was a psychologist. Uh, he, he, he would tell casinos what colors of carpet, how, the texture, uh, how many red-handled machines, all, all, anything that had to do with how do you keep people in the house and, and get them to play until they're broke, and then play some more on their, on their plastic. And anyway, so he decided, he went to our website, he said, okay, they've got a prison ministry. Well, okay, I can turn that into a bad thing, and he did. He told everybody out here we were going to build barracks out here, and we'd have 100, and he calculated it all out, how many barracks we could build, 184 <laughs> prisoners out here. So they were going to rape and pillage and plunder all the houses that were behind us. And people went, just all of a sudden, a spirit of fear came, and they just went nuts, and they joined this thing and lawyered up, told us we couldn't be here. So a year and a half later, we're down to 25 people, but we got our use permit. God is good. And, and since that time, the leader of the band, actually God touched his heart, and he, he actually came crying to me and apologized. And everybody that was against us, God has made a way for us to reconcile, what have you. And some of them are dead, some of them are moved away, but we're still here. Just a little history for you. You know, these things don't just, don't just happen. 
I'm not a rich kid. I didn't come from a rich family. Uh, I'm rich in God, you know, and, and we've, we've actually invested over $930,000 on this property. It's hard to see, but it's underground out on the street, yeah. curbs and gutters, the light poles that we bought for the city and the fire hydrants and all the things that, you, yes, we have a parking lot, praise God. That was expensive too, very. And, you know, all the parking lot stripes, the whole thing. And uh, so here we are, and we built, uh, you can see the pad out in front for our uh, sanctuary that uh, we're just about a half a million dollars away from finishing. But the pad's there, and we're that far. And, of course, I, uh, we've never been able to build, but God does interesting things. I mean, one time a lady gave us $30,000, and she wasn't even going to our church. Another guy gave us, uh, we had prayed for her and had some contact with her, and, uh, you know, our, the prayers worked, and she was thankful, and so she, you know, 30000 that helps. Uh, that was good, but another guy, Pastor Lou, was uh, tutoring his uh, son, and uh, he gave us $100,000 for the building project. The next year, he gave us $200,000. The next year... He moved. I don't know what happened. Anyway, you know, you, but people aren't our source. But God, God has taken care of bringing money in that's far beyond what our congregation could do. Okay? And we will finish the course. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, so here we are uh, in this location, changed the name to Wellspring Church of All Nations. And today is the second day of the 27th year of Wellspring Church. Now, you, if you come out here and you look at the property, you can say, wow, this is really something. You look at the size of the congregation, you say, well, what happened? Well, people got discouraged. They do. It takes a long time. They want, rah, rah, rah. you know, when we were in a rented facility, it was great. And, uh, but we, you, paying $14,000 a month rent to somebody else is silly to me. Yeah. And so is going in debt. I'm big on getting out of debt. I wish you would all listen to a guy that I think God has set as a prophet in the land. That's Dave Ramsey. He doesn't think he's a prophet. He's just trying to help people. But that's the way God does things. But he's, he's teaching people how to get out of debt, stay out of debt, and even when it looks impossible. But see, all things are possible with God. And it, those kind of things actually are pretty mechanical. You just live within your means. Right? You have a budget. You live within your means. You live today uh, in a way that you don't really want to. Go ahead. That's right. That's right. See, how, how you set yourself up today is how you're going to live later. If you'll bite the bullet and, and keep yourself from spending today when you are debt-free, you'll have more money than you know what to do with. Wouldn't that be a shame? <laughs> <laughs> and so we have been paying, we have been paying as we go, staying out of debt, just moving along. Hallelujah. We did, we did buy this with a mortgage. That was before we learned better. When you learn better, you should do better. Right. Pretty simple. Yeah. And uh, so God says, oh, no man anything but to love. Well, Right? And that the borrower is a servant or a slave to the lender. You keep that, those two thoughts in mind, and if you want to stay free, you stay debt-free. And you say, well, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You just can't drive as nice a car as you'd like to have today. But you'll drive whatever you want tomorrow. You can pay cash for it tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's, yeah, that's the whole thing. And... Uh, it's a, it's, it's a good way to live. Anyway, so here we are. And, uh, we've, but, you know, it, it's been a tremendous journey because you, I mean, there's a plaque on the wall here that our ministerial fellowship gave us because we were the missions organization of the year for our ministerial fellowship. You say, well, how could that be? I said, we've been all over the world. It's amazing. We've got missionaries everywhere. We've got, and, and natives that we went, we ministered to, there's one young man now, I mean, he's, he, he, when he has a meeting, he has 2,500, 3,000 young people at all of his meetings, and in a very poor area in the Philippines, 
and he is blowing and going. His brother's in the ministry, too. All these kids we went, we ministered to, we prophesied to, and now they are doing exploits for God, and they look to us as mom and, mom and dad, you know, and it's phenomenal. And this church, because we send money, we, we, we encourage, we support, and uh, it, it's tremendous. There's an orphanage in Malaysia, a Muslim country, we were the first church to give any money to that orphanage when they first began. I think, I don't know, it wasn't much. It was five, ten bucks. I mean, it wasn't much. Over there, it, it seemed like okay, but it wasn't great. But we gave them their first offering, and that, like, opened the floodgates, and all of a sudden, they'd never had money before given to them. All of a sudden, different ministries started sending them money, and now they are today. They've raised up, I don't know how many Christian kids educated Christian kids in a Muslim country. And it, it's just phenomenal. So though, that we've seen those kind of things. We've had our setbacks. In fact, we went to, uh, right after we were down to 25 people, and we were wondering, how in the world are we going to stay here? How are we going to pay the bills? We had an opportunity to go to Nigeria. And uh, we got to be on the platform, 2,500 people on the platform. It was one of seven platforms with the Redeemed Christian Church of God. They had 10 million people at that meeting. They would shout hallelujah, and the ground would shake. Hallelujah. He'd say, open your Bible, and you could hear. Oh, it was, it was awesome. And so we're over there, and he asked me if I would lead them in prayer. Well, I'm leading 10,000 on fire Nigerians in prayer, and I'm thinking to myself, Lord, you really have a sense of humor. We're going home to 25 people. And this is just ridiculous. And, and we got to minister to them and, and saw miraculous healings, all kinds of stuff that went on. And yet we knew what we were coming back to. And the Lord told us then, he said, I, numbers are not a problem for me. I said, okay, great. So I'm thinking in my head, I'm going to go home and we're just going to explode. You know, numbers are no problem for God, right? Well, it, <laughs> see, he forgot to tell somebody. We came home, five more people left. We were down to 20. So we have been coming back from there. 20 people coming back. Hallelujah. Has it been easy? Well, no, not really. But it's worth it. See, we ordained Pastor Causey, uh, who has River of Life Word Ministries, a very thriving church right here in town. He's my spiritual son. That's one of our churches. We have another church down at the Las Vegas Revival Center, where it's an outreach to the drug community. And we're still building, we're still here, which is absolutely miraculous. You're here, which is just phenomenal, you know. It is. It's a, what a blessing. And we're into something that, that is a God thing. And what we have experienced to date is nothing compared to what we're going to be experiencing. But we've got to get on fire about what we have here, what God has done here in the past. But let that go and just say, I'm going to be a part of building in the future. And really, all it is is just, wow, you know, you, are you a Christian? Yes, no, you know, well, whatever, lead them to Christ, or if they say they are, find out what kind, and uh, ask them if they're happy with their church or not, and if they're not, say, look, I go to a really neat church. Come, be my guest, and let's build this thing, because it's worth building. It's worth fighting for. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, here we are, the second day of our 27th year, and all kinds of wonderful things. Uh, setbacks have strengthened us. We've been through the fire. We met the fourth man there. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. We came out. We still don't smell like smoke, and we're not scorched or burnt, and we're, we're not discouraged by any means and looking ahead. But Sharon and I, we wouldn't trade our walk for anything. Not, it, not that we understand the way it's gone, but it's been phenomenal. It really has. You know, we, 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 like I said, we've raised the dead. We've, blind eyes have opened. Cripples have been healed. People have received new hearts. Cancers have been destroyed. I mean, you, you just go on and on and on. You run out of, you just run out of time. Get on our Signs and Wonders page on our website. Uh, I don't even know why it's still on there, but it is. But it, it tracks way back, and, and just miracle after miracle and things that have happened. And uh, that's all great. But that really means nothing, because it's only what we do today and what we're going to do tomorrow. God has, 
has indwelt you to manifest the power of resurrection in and through you to a, to a world that's desperately in need of you and in need of the gospel. Uh, it, it, our, our whole society is unraveling, and yet we are the seamstresses, if you will, that are going to put it back together. Hallelujah. We have the tool. We know how to do it. Amen. It's, it's just simply sharing Christ. What has Christ done in your life? He'll do for anybody else. He restores marriages. He restores individuals that are just all caught up in stuff that's tearing their lives apart. And it's just wonderful. And knowing him passes all earthly pleasure. It, it really does. I mean, the Christian life should not be, you should not look like you've been sucking on a lemon. You really should. You, you should you, if, if you can just begin to share your faith, you'll wind up so excited about what God has done in your life, you have to pinch yourself to see if it's really you living. Because it is. It, it's just It's awesome. I mean, when you stand there, I mean, try and imagine what's it like when, when you say somebody's dead and you say, in the name of Jesus, live, and he actually does. It's like, whoa, 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 yes. You know, you know it's not you, but you've got to be there, right? Yeah, you may start out with a common cold or somebody's headache. or something. I mean, it doesn't matter where you start, just start. Because Jesus wants to use you. To, 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 to move in compassion, the compassion of God. Hallelujah. That Jesus is the perfection of beauty, for he is the light of the city. And uh, I, I just can't thank him enough. I've been able to travel the world. It, we, a little bit about Sharon and I. I mean, we were workers. We, I don't know, maybe we've got German in us. Work. We work. You know, we work. We had a work ethic, strong work ethic. And so we had one, we started a business. And then that did pretty good, but it had, woo, -woo you know, it was good and it was not good, and whatever you, you, you made here, you lost here. And it, so, well, of course, two businesses should be better than one, so we opened another one. Then we opened another one. Then we opened another one. And, and so the problem was they all went like this at the same time, so you worked like crazy, you know, and then uh, it just, anyway. So... Uh, then we decided, well, something's missing, so let's be Amway distributors. And we, did, <laughs> we got, it, got into Amway, you know. And the thing that was so remarkable was they had this, they had this, this phrase that just, it just gets you. It says, walk the beaches of the world with your friends. That was, their, that was the hook. And, and, and they meant it. They meant it. I mean, but it's not a, it's not a get rich, rich quick. You work yourself silly. And, and uh, anyway, we're not doing that anymore <laughs> at all. <laughs> but uh, so, but that, that always stuck. And one day, here we are, we've, we've become born again. We're, we're active in the ministry now. We're, we're traveling. We're going places. And uh, here we are. We're on the, what, what's the ocean? It's the, uh, the South China Sea. We're in Malaysia on a beautiful beach looking at the South China Sea. And there's Lou, Pastor Lou Grillo, my dear friend, Reverend Juanita Williams, uh, uh, who is one of our missionaries. And, uh, of course, you and I, I think we're we both there. Anyway, we're there. And I'm standing there, and I'm looking. And there, I think Virginia was there at the time. I don't know. Anyway, there was somebody else there. Robbie was with us. That's right. Robbie was with us. And we're, so we're all standing there. We're looking out on the South China Sea. All of a sudden, it hit me. Walk the beaches of the world with your friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've been on the Mediterranean Sea. We've been on the, 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 we've been on the South China Sea. We've been on the Black Sea. We've been, I mean, all with, pe with people, other people that are our friends that are in ministry. You don't need Amway to go to, you know. God takes care of it. Hallelujah. And it's awesome. There's nothing quite like it. And so uh, as we go along, we'll be doing more short-term mission trips, and we'll be able to do that. It's, it's really great fun. And uh, it's a culture shock, but it's a lot of fun. But to God be all the glory. Hallelujah. Where you can, you can actually go and change people's lives, and then it, what you do continues. Because once a person is born again, their future has been transformed. They'll never be the same. And as, as they mature in Christ, as they go along in Christ, they'll look back and they'll see you. 
uh, there used to be a, a, a song, Robbie sings it beautifully, is he, you know, thank you for giving unto the Lord, giving to the Lord. Thank you for caring. Thank you. It's, it's a phenomenal song. But that's, that's the song you're going to hear when you get to heaven because a crowd is going to come around you and people you don't even know and because you led one person to Christ, because you cared for one other person who cared for somebody, who cared for somebody, who cared, you're going to wind up being met with a whole crowd of people that are going to sing to you, thank you for giving to the Lord. It's an eternal thing that we're involved in. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so the, 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 you know, the greatest miracle, we look for signs, wonders, miracles, we're Pentecostals, why not? And I, and I don't discount that, but the greatest miracle is somebody who actually gives their heart and life to Jesus Christ. They come into a personal relationship with Jesus, and they meet him at the cross of Calvary and repent of their sins and become born again. There's no greater miracle than that. And it will last throughout eternity. Hallelujah. And so the promise of this year and the future really is beyond our imagination. It, 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 the prophets looked at the day that we live in and were just thrilled about it and wishing that they could be here now. I'm glad I'm still alive. Hallelujah. I have seen some things. And I can tell you what I've seen. And the only reason I do is that you will know what it's possible. Hallelujah. I don't know if my battery went out yeah. or what happened. I'm quick. Okay. It, it's, just, it's just phenomenal. See, what, what, what God has in store for you, if you're willing, see, if you're really willing to just go ahead and let go and let God. Another song. Why don't you let go and let God do what he wants to to do with you why don't you let go and let God do what he wants to do with you why don't you let go and let God send you to the nations of the world I mean there's no limit see there's no limit see but I don't want to be a preacher so don't be a preacher be a doctor be a lawyer be a politician oh please be a top politician be an attorney. Be a judge. Be, I mean, be an educator. We need teach Christian teachers so badly where you get in. I mean, Pastor Lou has done more for the cause of Christ in the school set because he's a teacher than most people do in a lifetime. He can do in one year. It's phenomenal. I mean, you're not, wh who you are is a Christian. What you do is how you make money. Come on. It's just that simple. I mean, if you're called into the ministry, glory to God. I hope some of you will be. You just you just go crazy like me and just you know go for it, right? But that doesn't limp. That doesn't limit you. God needs Christians everywhere doing the works of Jesus. He raised He raised the dead, cleansed the lepers. He set the captives free. And if he is in you, and he is Christ in you, the hope of glory, you can do the same thing. And that's really, the, that, that's, the whole, that's the whole reason you're born again. It's not just to get you saved, although God loves you and he wants that, but he wants you to come into the family business and become an active part of building his house and his kingdom. And as we catch that vision, we begin to realize that it really does depend upon us. I mean, it's like people, they, they don't vote. I don't like anybody up there. If you don't vote, you might as well go to another country and live. Really. It's a privilege. We need to find out who's, who's on the field, what their character is like, what they do privately does reflect on what they do publicly. Find those things out. Find out where they stand. And then actually vote for people that are the most biblical in their worldview. And then we'll have a nation that's, that, that begins to be healed and to be prospered. See? It's really pretty simple. You can't let community organizers take the world over unless you are one. See, and we should have Christ, Christian community organizers. 
Amen. That, that actually have a biblical worldview. Say, yeah, that's, that sounds great, but what does the Bible say? What's God say? <laughs> oh, what a concept. Wow. Huh? Amen. The future is bright, and, and harvest time is our portion. I said harvest time. That's getting the lost saved. People don't know. They're hearing from the cults. They're hearing all kinds of ideologies. That are, you know, today the bi the biggest one and the biggest threat to our country is communism, socialism, and it, it's being promoted. And it is a religion. Believe me, it is. And it's a, it's a religion without God. Well, actually, some some leader sees themselves as God. <laughs> That's the problem. You, you they, they, they're they're interesting in distributing wealth as long as they don't have to distribute their own. <laughs> so you need to get to the bottom of that stuff. Oh my 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 my. See, our heavenly nearest kinsman, Jesus. Sharon's been teaching it. I hope you can come tonight. You're going to be talking about on Ruth again, or no, not tonight. But it's really, really been a wonderful, wonderful series. And uh, uh, one of the one of the things with Ruth and Boaz was that Boaz instructed his workers to leave her uh, heaps of purpose. And our kinsman redeemer, Jesus. That's what he means by, by I, I bring you life and life more abundantly. I'm going to leave you heaps of purpose. I'm going to give you harvest where you haven't even set your hand if you'll just get into the field, get into the right field. See, and, and what he's commanded, we gather the heaps of the harvest field. And, and he means that no longer we're going to gather what's left by cultists, and the ideologues, but we'll be gathering the choicest out of every people group, every tribe, every tongue, see, every nationality, every people. God, God's in love with people. He just loves people, he, you know, all kinds of people. God, they, you look around you and you look at the different shapes, sizes, colors, and everything, the backgrounds of people, and, and you just say, wow, God, you, you are a God of diversity. And everything is made beautiful. Huh? Amen. It really is. I mean, there's nothing like ch traveling the world. What you find out is that the food, you may not be familiar with what they're eating, but it guarantees it's good. I said it's good. If you can get past what it looks like, it's good. <laughs> because we, we pick up these, these, these traditional, you know, experiential things. And we're told what's good, what's not good. And, and you get out among the cultures, you find out every culture has got a richness that you don't want to miss. You want to somehow incorporate it into your, into your own experience. And, and whether it's food or whether it's music or whatever it is, I mean, I can, I can hardly, we're going to Mexico City in, in uh, August to minister down there with Amigos de Fe. And uh, I can hardly wait to get down there because I love Latino worship. They are crazy, man. They're just plum loco. They just go wild for Jesus. And it's awesome. It's just awesome. It's vibrant and it's alive, you know. And uh, it, they, 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 don't, they, they can't sit still. They don't know how to sit still. It's kind of like Filipinos. They, if they don't have flags and, and tambourines and dancing, they, they haven't been to a worship service. And we need all of that, see. And then the food, oh, yeah. oh too much. Anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> but we'll gather, gather heaps of, of purpose. Psalm 2 and, 2 and 8 says, ask of me. God, this is God. He says, if you'll just, if you care enough to ask of me, I'll give you the lost for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession." Remember, God owns everything. And he wants us to propagate righteous seed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I ask him today and, and for the harvest, for your harvest, for the people 
and, and begin to reap the harvest of precious souls. It's really pretty simple. You know, uh, once the Billy Graham people, they, they said, uh, they, they were teaching on evangelism, knocking on doors. Uh, you know, we think only Mormons do that, but actually Christians can do that too. And, but one in every four houses, and this was years ago, is in crisis right now. One in four. Now it's probably one in three. It's in crisis. Somebody just died. Somebody just overdosed. Somebody just shot somebody. Somebody just, they just had a huge fight. One in three. See, so, so you're looking at people at the grocery store. You're looking at people all, wherever you are, in school, everywhere. You know what? One in every three is, is wading through difficult stuff. And if you just care, look at look in their eyes. You can see it. You don't have to, you, you don't have to need spiritual woo 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 to know discerning. It's good. Word of knowledge is good. But just being aware of people and their countenance, and and then just saying, I mean, say what you see. Say you look troubled. Are you okay? Yeah, you you're liable to. I mean, that may be your open door to getting somebody saved and beginning to heal their life. It's really easy to, to if we'll just pay attention to other people. Are you okay? Hmm? What's going on? I mean, even in a grocery store line, people tell you the whole life story. Grocery line. Hallelujah. You can invite them to church or lead them to Jesus or whatever. It's, it's, it's just so easy, really. Yeah. Hi, what's your name? I'm so and so. Where do you go to school? What do you, you know, or what kind of work you do? Just start a conversation. Be friendly. You show yourself friendly. If you wanted friends, show yourself friendly. What a concept! Wow. Huh? Hallelujah. And they, but primarily, ask God. Let and and say, Lord, just put me, put me, put people in front of me that that need me today. Get out of your box. You'll be so blessed. Hallelujah. Because who, who do we have? I mean, why are we here? What, what, what's this all about? You know, we're, we, have, we have a loving God in heaven that wants us to develop a relationship with him in, in and through his son, Jesus Christ, and then to get involved in his business. Family business. Family business. Hallelujah. And, and he is our Father in heaven, and he should be our all-consuming desire. So, do you see him as your all in all? It, it, he's your portion forever, if you'll let him be. He's always available. I like that. He never turns his phone off. I mean, I even do that. I, when I take a nap, I, just, I turn it off. It's just So, you know, leave a message. I'll get back to you. Okay. But God doesn't do that. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. He's faithful. He's true.